Glory to God. Wow. What a great message, right? Yeah. Amen. How do I go after that? Mm -hmm. <laughs> close for that. Holy well, Spirit shows you all the time. Yeah. Yes, he does. I'll do my best, but you know, thank God that I don't have to come up with the words uh, that you're about to hear. God has all the best words to say, amen? Amen. They're his words. So, you know, while getting ready to close up on tonight's message, uh, I was praying and uh, this week, and it was impressed upon me, uh, upon my heart, that the, the subject of joint meetings uh, has been coming up lately uh, here at church, um, in my personal studies, uh, on TV, uh, YouTube, other places. I keep seeing the subject of dreams coming up. And dreams, that's a big word. It means a lot of things. And I didn't really see Steve going that way tonight. He didn't, and I'm like well, thinking as I'm sitting back there, Lord, this doesn't seem like it's going in that direction. How's this going to connect, you know? Uh, and I, I have to say as a precursor that, uh, you know, I kind of titled this ending um, Dream Big, okay? And so I think about the American dream. And Steve, Pastor Steve kind of went that way tonight. He kind of started talking about America a little bit. Uh, and... You know, America was built on the Word of God, right? And this isn't even in my message. This is just kind of a precursor thought. But uh, it's built on the Word of God, and God. So that's so. Therefore, it's built on God's heart, right? And God's heart, His Word says that uh, anything that we believe uh, that lines up with His heart is possible, right? And that it can be, it can happen. That's the American dream, isn't it? That if we believe in something, we can we can have that dream. So I want to start by saying, dream big, right? And you know, I've been having vivid dreams lately. Uh, I've been having visitation from Jesus and from angels, and uh, I, you know, dream. You know, you know that song. Dream, dream, dream. I've been even hearing that song. Kelly was listening to me sing it earlier today. She's like, you're not going to sing that in church, are you? <laughs> I've done crazier things. Uh, <laughs> and I'm saying, God, what are you trying to say? And last week, Pastor Steve uh, was in, and this week, 1 Corinthians uh, chapter 10, verses uh, 1 to 12 mostly. And then he went on tonight, and, he, and like he said, he's going to expand on those thoughts. And he did. He expanded on them. Uh, and and uh, he, last week, he did mention the word dreams. And he said, uh, you know, he, he was talking about dreaming big and believing with big faith for what God uh, and you can do together, right? Yeah. And as Pastor Steve uh, came to me last week and he said, PD, uh, I, I'm going to press into this more uh, next week, but God told me to ask you to, uh, to close out for me. And so, yeah, I'm praying at home and I'm like, God, what do you want to say? And God's like, uh, he, quickly, he quickly said to me, he said, talk to them about dreams. Okay, uh, and he's like, Dave, I've been prepping you for this for months. Okay, I've literally visited you in your dreams. I mean, it's all about dreams right now. Now's the time to release it. Okay, so he's ready to talk about dreams for a few minutes. Okay. Okay. So God wants you to dream big, y'all. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We'll say that again. God wants you to dream big. Can I get an amen? Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Thank you for that thunderous reply. <laughs> you know, sometimes as preachers, we kind of have to we have to be like a, a, an auctioneer, you know, trying to get that higher bidder. Yeah, uh, you know, can I get two? Can I get two amens? Can I get three? Can I get three? Yeah, thank you. All right. <laughs> See, y'all, God wants you to use your imagination. Okay, He 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 gave you that imagination because He wants you to dream. He wants you to dream big. When you dream big, it honors God. Okay? It shows faith. That's why it honors God. It shows trust. And you should base your dreams not on what you think uh, you can do, but what you should base your dream on is what you think God can do. Amen. Okay? So you got to let the size 
of your God determine the size of your goal. Amen. Praise God. So God is big, y'all. He's big. He's really big. So dream big. You know, you got to say God's dream for my life is bigger than my dream. Right. right. Listen, if your dream doesn't scare you, it's probably not from God. Amen. Okay? Maybe I'll step on some toes saying that. Like, Pastor Steve's stepping on toes tonight, I'll step on a few toes. If it does scare you, it is from God, I promise you. Okay? Unless it's a nightmare, and then that's a whole different story. <laughs> God's got a dream for you. It's big. Okay? It's so awesome, guys. And you got to know that you can't do it in your own power. Uh, or your own strength, or your own resources, okay? We've got to depend on God, and we've got to get ready. We've got to put ourselves in a, a, a state of, of readiness, okay? Because something's about to happen. You know, Albert Einstein, I heard once, said that imagination is more important than knowledge. Amen. Okay? And he said imagination rules the world. So I dare you to dream great dreams. Praise God. We live in a world, guys, that's, that's been shaped by the dreams of people. Right? What about the Wright brothers? They dreamt the flight. And what do we have now? Yeah. We have aviation. Yeah. Yeah. Okay? Yeah. Alexander Graham Bell dreamed of communication. You know, not more than just word of mouth over devices. And what do we have now? We get telephones. And we can go even further with that. We got cell phones, iPhones. Who would have ever thought that? I know he probably didn't. There's been dreamers, you know? No matter what you think about these people, there's been people like Steve Jobs. You know, uh, uh, Jobs, sorry, I got Job on the mind. Uh, Steve Jobs. <laughs> and we got um, uh, uh, Bill Gates, right? Right? Elon Musk, he's actually on my list here. Elon Musk, right? Donald Trump, even, yeah. A dreamer. Right? Who dreamed. He shaped and formed the world that we live in. Okay? How? By the dreams that were in their heart. And you know, I've really decided, and I've just kind of come to this conclusion, that there's, there's really no great people. Okay? There's only great dreams. Amen? Listen, when an ordinary person goes after a dream, they become a great person. And, and give me a second to clarify something. But I've concluded that we're all ordinary people. Amen. Right? But some ordinary people attach themselves to extraordinary dreams. Right? And, and attaching yourself to an extraordinary dream, you become an extraordinary person. Okay? Now, yes, now here's what I want to clarify. We are all extraordinary in God's eyes. We're all famous in the Lord's eyes. Okay, so don't get that twisted. But I'm talking about the things that we achieve here. Okay, and not how people see us, but what we accomplish for God's glory on this side of the cross. He put us here to do great things. Amen? You, you guys, you have no idea what God can do in your life. If you believe God for big dreams, God will do big things in your life. Okay? And if your dream doesn't scare you, I'm going to say it again. It's too small. The Bible says, according to your faith, it will be done unto you. Right? You get to decide. Because guess what? A dream stretches your faith. And it forces you to trust in God. And listen, I want to say something. I, I feel like God's pressing this on my heart. Someone in here is saying, PD, it's too late. It's not too late. A dream is a God-given project and destiny that can come any time in your life. Yeah. It means that you see it out there or something that God shows you that he says, this is what I see in you. And this is what who I see in you. Right? And guess what that's called? That's called a dream. Right? It's a designated end. It's a vision of where I can be when God places his hand upon my life. 
And there's no question that God has a dream for every person in this house tonight and watching online, right? But with that dream, I want to tell you something. There always comes resistance. It's where faith comes in, okay? There's always going to be resistance. There's always going to be pushback from the enemy. He wants to John 10.10 10, that dream. Amen. Anybody know what John 10.10 10 is? Yes. Yeah. Is the other. But amen. John 10 10, part A. He wants to kill, steal, and destroy. Praise God. But praise God that Jesus wants to give us abundance. Amen. And listen, if you don't learn to endure the nightmare, you're never going to experience the dream. You know, so many people, they give up and quit because, because they have a dream planted by God in their heart, but then comes the nightmare. People usually give up at the nightmare. Okay? The John 10.10, 10, part A. Right? But you got to understand that the moment of the greatest opportunity, everything you want is on the other side of not giving up. The nightmare is trying to steal that dream. Your trouble is your best way to triumph. Your mess is a pathway to the miraculous of God in your life. Yeah. Don't give up. Okay, that's what God's trying to say tonight. Stop, don't give up. The dream tells you where you're going. Your adversity will only advance you. Okay? Mm -hmm. And like we've all talked about, God's not bringing the adversity. Mm -hmm. Okay? Right. <laughs> right? The, night, the nightmare says give up. But God is saying to you today that anything worth doing is worth doing well. That's right. right? And he's also saying anything worth doing, get this, is worth failing at. Okay? He's saying if you want to give yourself to something, give yourself to something that's worth failing at. Over and over. Because guess what? What comes out of failure? Success. Amen. Amen. Just because you fail, don't give up. Okay? You just have to learn how it wasn't going to happen. Amen. Yeah. And you know what? You're not a failure because, uh, because you fail. The only failure is if you quit. Yeah. That's right. Right? Don't even yeah. Amen. right? Yeah. This is a motivational message tonight, guys. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we let Steve do the, the scripture, a hard scripture. I'm doing a little motivation here. Okay? Don't let other people's opinions become your reality. Yep. Here, I'm going to get a little Bible on you, okay? King Saul had an opinion, didn't he? <laughs> yeah. He had a lot of opinions. <laughs> and we know about that, what, the, what that is. Okay, but listen. He said, David, you can't defeat Goliath. Not with that slingshot, Right? Not with those little itty bitty stones. You need this armor, mm -hmm. right? And you need to do this. Mm -hmm. And you need to do that. Mm -hmm. But David said, I'm not going to let your opinion, King Saul, become my reality, Amen. right? I'm going to do what God told me to do, mm -hmm. right? So many times people give up and they quit right on the verge and they let other people decide their destiny for them. And I'm telling you today that it's time to pick up those drop dreams. Okay? God has an amazing plan for your life. And God speaks to us in many ways. You know, sometimes, you know, we could have like a vision, you know, during the daytime. Maybe it's like you're, you're, uh, you're reading the Bible or you're listening to a sermon on, in church maybe or, or on YouTube or wherever on some platform or we're in worship in our prayer closet or maybe we're praying in tongues or, or, or whatever. God speaks to you and, he, and you know that he has a, a calling for you to do something, right? And, and maybe there's somebody out there that says, oh, that's dumb. Don't listen to other people. Okay? Not everybody hears the audible voice of God. I get it. Okay? I, look, I've been blessed for, since I was a child to have that in my life. Some people get that. Some people, maybe everybody could have that. I don't know. But we all, no matter what, have the nudging and the tugging 
and our Holy Spirit, or the Spirit of ours, by the Holy Spirit, right? So within us, we have Jesus and his Spirit within us. You can have those promptings. You can have those nudgings and those urgings. The key thing here is that we learn to listen. We learn to listen to how God speaks to each of us individually. Okay? Uh, because there's something about receiving God's plan and his dream that causes our faith to come alive. And, and it helps keep us going when the times get tough. Okay? And, and sometimes God reminds us of dreams that he's given us in the past, and sometimes he enlarges them and he expands them and, uh, on the vision that we have. And, y'all, you know, it's one thing to dream the dream we need to dream, but how many of you here know that it's another whole deal to actually live the dream? <laughs> Amen. I mean, look at Pastor Stephen, Pastor Aaron. I just, the, the nutshell version is that they were living in Missouri at one point, right? And God said, go to Texas, right? And, and go, to, go to college, you know, in your 50s, almost probably at that point, yes. right? You know, and, sorry to throw the age out there, guys, but I think we all uh, But so he, he says, go start a church a thousand miles over in South Carolina, away from Texas, right? You know? And here they are, living the dream. And guess what? They've had nightmare parts of that, I'm sure. There's been some nightmares. <laughs> but they're enduring. And the great things are coming because they're not letting their failures cause them to quit. Amen. Right? And they don't let their fear stop them from acting on what God said. I'm sure there's many places they would love to be. But God said, be here. So they're here with us. Amen. And we thank God for that. They're chasing after God's dream for their life with fire and passion yeah. and endurance to press in, run the race that's given to them. Yeah. They want the prize and they're, they're willing to press in for it. Okay? Are you? Are you? Hey, listen. I'm asking myself that. God's <laughs> preaching to me. I was just whining the other day. Okay? <laughs> and God's saying to me and he's saying to you, suck it up, buttercup. Okay? And yeah, he, he talks that way to me sometimes. Yeah, yeah. I don't know if he talks that way to you. He might talk to you in King James Version. You know, suck it up. I don't know. <laughs> when I was a kid, I wasn't even allowed to say the word suck, so I'm mom, I'm sorry. Uh, don't give up on the dream, guys. You know, you're right, you're right on the verge, it's around the next corner, and I don't know about you, but when God speaks to me about the future, there's something in me that wants it right now. Okay? Yeah. And in some cases, that's okay. It can be right now. Sometimes there's a lag, right? Between the vision and the conception. Sometimes that can be hours or days. Yeah, Sometimes it, it could be years mm -hmm. before the vision is finally fulfilled. But God's telling me something for you guys, and I don't want to just get to it as quick as I can here, because I know we're hungry. Uh, it's, it's, but He wants to feed you, He wants to feed you spiritually. It's, he wants to tell you something about a dream here or how it works. It's not that God is deliberately holding things back because he's mean and he wants to play games with you. He's a good God, okay? He's a loving father. He wants the best, but he often knows that we're not ready to live the dream when he gives us the dream, okay? He just wants to help get us moving in the right direction, okay? And there, there's some things, that, you know, there's some that, that are going to say if you have enough faith, PD, you can do anything you want right now when you say it. And let me tell you something that may be true in, in, in a lot of cases, but you need to, it's a fine line. You need to be, you're walking, okay? It's a fine line between witchcraft and wizardry and, Amen. and what God has for you, okay? Faith is now, yes. Belief is now, yes. Sometimes it happens right now, and I've seen it many times in healings and miracles and, and other things, but the Bible is clear that manifestation isn't always now. Amen. Okay? Faith is now. Belief is now. Just like Pastor Steve said, you're not in debt. Okay? That's your belief. You're not in debt. I'm not struggling with that. I'm, I'm not in debt. That's true. Okay? But the truth is the manifestation of debt freedom, and you might not see it with your eyes for another month or whatever. So don't get that twisted, okay? Uh, it's a real messy faith walk if you don't understand these things. 
And listen, preparation is something that we should rejoice in. Okay? Embrace it. But if you're in the preparation season, can I say in Jesus' name, don't quit. Okay? Don't take shortcuts. Don't compromise. What you're seeking will come to pass. Believe it. Okay? So make a decision that you're going to do the best for God right now where you are. Because if you're faithful and you're fruitful where you are right now, God can and will give you all that you desire that aligns with his nature and his attributes. And if it's something that Jesus died for, okay, he'll give it to you and he'll give you more than you can ever achieve, uh, ever believe. Exceedingly abundantly is what Bob's thinking when I said that. Yeah. Ephesians 3.20, right? Amen. Yeah. Because guess what? He's not a God of just enough. Right? He's a God of more. He's the God of overflow. Right? Woo! Praise God. But I just got to say this again. This is just ringing in my heart. Never despise the day of small things. Amen. Is what the word says, right? So, you know, there's those of you here that have a dream or a goal or something that you believe God's will is for your life. Right? But nothing's happening. Right? And don't you know that God is not going to unleash you on the world <laughs> until you learn how to handle the little bit that he's given you? Handle it with, with excellence. Amen. Okay? Amen. Be faithful in the little bit, and God will give you more. Amen? Amen? Amen. Yeah. You see, a dream, I remember I walked into this church three years ago, and it was me. Kelly Sue Wright, I think maybe the first time I walked in there, and Aaron and Steve, and my wife. Look at you, you're growing. <laughs> You've got a thousand percent growth. Amen. And it's gonna keep on going, Amen. you know? You know? It started with a dream and they did with a little bit, okay? You see, a dream when you get it will encourage you. There's something, and this, this is really important, I think you need to hear this. Uh, and my wife and I were talking about this earlier. There's something about a dream that brings encouragement and joy to people's lives. Hmm, yeah. I'm gonna skip that because I wanna get to that real quick. Uh, if you, there's those, okay, this is what I think God wants to say. There are those that are dealing with depression, okay? They're discouraged. I'm not just talking about not realizing their dream. I'm just talking in general. They're depressed and discouraged about life. Let me tell you something. You need a dream to bring you back to life, okay? Because when you have a dream, it makes you get up in the morning. Hallelujah. Yeah. Glory to God. Right? It, it makes you put your clothes on and go to work. Because you've got a dream. And the dream has a power to encourage you. You want to know the cure for depression? Get a dream. If you don't have a goal, if you don't have something to stimulate your brain, if you don't have something to keep you sharp, if you don't have challenges, you're not going to stay alive because you have no joy. And without joy, you have no hope. Right? I know our hope is in the Lord, but the joy of the Lord is our strength. Yeah. Hallelujah. Right? Man, God, praise God. Listen, guys, you can drop into a pile of dust pretty quick. It can happen anytime if you don't have something to live for. Hezekiah had something to live for, didn't he? Yeah. Amen. The king of Nineveh had something to live for, didn't he? Too bad the king of Sodom didn't. Hmm. And sure, you got Jesus. And if you die of sadness right now, you'll go home to heaven if you know Jesus, right? But the Bible says we're supposed to live 120 years and live in the joy of the Lord and bring joy to others and bring them to Jesus. Guys, dreams motivate us. They energize us. They fire us up. I kind of went down some tangents, so I'm not going to get to all this today. Maybe uh, I'll put a video out or something. Okay. Uh, and give you the fuller version of it. But yeah. So let me just say this. Let's close up here. Okay. Your imagination is either going to be governed by fear 
or it's gonna be governed by faith, right? And that's your choice. But God is saying, if you just say, I'm not going to allow fear to dominate my life, and I'm gonna trust you, God, that God is saying to you tonight that all things are possible. Because that's what his word says. You know, I've been on a learning curve my entire life. And you don't even know what you're good at until the dream pulls it out of you. I know this guy over here, Wes, he had a dream. Yeah? And he stepped out of a comfortable and just steady paycheck. And he did something that was scary. And he's doing great now, aren't you? Praise God. It's only in the dream that you push out of yourself. Okay? And it forces you to be bigger than yourself and to grow beyond yourself so that you're not selfish anymore. Without a dream, you're dying. PD, that's a horrible thing to say. How could you say that? <laughs> I didn't say it, and this is my final statement here. Proverbs 29, 18 said it, right? It says the people perish without a vision. And if you look at the Greek word there, it interprets that as a dream that has an eye on the future, <laughs> right? Someone listening online right now, maybe it's someone in house, you started dying a long time ago because you stopped dreaming. So the day God says, dare to dream, watch what happens. Amen. May God bless you all.